right. All right, welcome to Transformation Tuesday. It's January 12th, 2021. I'm so grateful for everyone for showing up for Paradigm Shifters. Right now we are at 627 from globally, 26 countries. And our purpose is shifting upward and uplifting each other globally. So I'm so excited. This is um, a long time coming to, um, we're introducing our Transformation Tuesday speaker today, Josephine Grace from Canada. Hey, Josephine. Hi, Hi everyone. <laughs> okay. And um, I want to tell you a little bit about Josephine's, um, and I, I posted this as the book, The Joyful Caregiver, Eight Steps to Prevent Caregiver Burnout. Wow. Yeah. And um, I want to read to you a little bit. Well, actually, I think I'm going to go and uh, show this little bit of video clip from when Josephine and I were together last. How's that sound? We good? That's great. There it is. Oops. Okay. So we were on a road trip. Jody and I were on a road trip across country in 2019 in July. And we met up with our other awesome friend, Lynn Tranchell, in Buffalo, New York. And we decided we were going to go to Niagara Falls. And we knew that Josephine, you live right, you live in Niagara Falls, right? I, I live, yes, I live in that area. Yeah. And she came across this bridge, kind of, right? <laughs> remember that day? I remember it well, I do. And we decided to go on this, this Maid of the Mist, which is a boat, right? Kind of, a, yeah, a boat. It takes you down really close and almost underneath Niagara Falls. And we had an intention. Do you remember what that intention was? Ooh, we had an intention to, I believe, to see a rainbow. That's right. And so this is the video of that moment. Wow. <laughs> OK, here you go. OK, and if you don't know Niagara Falls, um, Niagara Falls is on um, the American side is New York. And then there's a Canadian side with a bridge that goes over. And so this, it was going under the American Falls and the Canadian Falls is on this side. So here we go. This is that moment in time. Woohoo! two rainbows we saw three remember that we did okay. three rainbows and that's the last time that we saw each other we were going to meet up in the canadian side but 2020 made well whatever that's the past right we are going to be making it there so let me tell you a little bit about josephine grace okay let's take a deep breath in josephine is an international speaker and certified transformational life coach she earned a dual degree, an honors in Bachelor of Arts in Social Science and Bachelor of Education from the University of Toronto and continues to invest in advanced training and education. She has studied several healing modalities and personal development for the past 25 years and helps individuals, families and professional caregivers create richer, more fulfilling lives. As a well being advocate and caregiver for her parents, Josephine has real life experience with navigating health, grief, 
loss, and acceptance, which inspires others and helps them live their best life. Now, this is something that I did not know, which is like, I want to investigate more. Her professional career includes business management, business development, and educator. And she is the best-selling author of Help, My Loved One Has Cancer, Eight Steps to Prevent Caregiver Burnout. So you live now in Southern Ontario, Canada, and the proud mama of Lexi and Gracie. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Well, so welcome, welcome, welcome. And what I'd like to start out with, um, you know, tell us a little bit about how your journey that got you to write the book, just a little about your journey. And then I wanted to have some specific questions about that I had when reading your book. Okay. Sure. Sounds great. Okay. I actually have, uh, I wanted to make it sort of relevant as best as I could to today's time. And I was journaling on, um, you know, what I could possibly, because there's so many different aspects and, and, and stories that I can share, but I'll, I'll, I'll share one with that happened recently. So last week, as I was teaching my class, uh, one of my students asks about the book I wrote. And as I'm sharing an introduction of my book, a student types in that chalk chat box, teacher, what is burnout? And at that split second, I ask myself, how do I simplify this for my students? And what comes to me at that moment is, it's when you forget to care for yourself, when you forget to love yourself, when you are giving away so much of yourself and your time that you didn't schedule time to care for you. You forgot to put on your own oxygen mask while trying to save someone else. You feel so fatigued and exhausted. So exhausted that you can't even think straight. You're not sleeping. You're constantly worrying about your loved one and you're always irritated about everything. And when you start to think about the things that irritate you, you realize how silly it is that you let something so small bug you so much. You're so exhausted that cooking a meal for yourself seems like so much work. So you grab anything out of your fridge and cover. At least you try. But now you realize you didn't have time to shop for groceries. So there's nothing in the fridge but a jar of pickles. So you have a pickle to satisfy your hunger again. And as soon as you decide you're going to rest and take a nap, your phone rings. It's your loved one asking for help. So you drop everything say yes, and head over to care for their needs. It's when the ability to say no is disabled and you find yourself saying yes to everything. And then you start resenting your loved one for being so dependent and needy of you. It's when you start thinking, when is this going to stop? When will they stop asking me to do things for them and just find a way to do it themselves? When will my life get back to normal and I have the time to take care of my things in my home? Do you wanna know when? When they're gone when they're no longer going to pick up the phone and call you. When you realize now you have all the time in the world, but you're too distraught that they're gone and you miss them so much. When you're laying in bed and stay in bed until the afternoon and your dog comes over to tell you that she needs to go outside to do her business. That's when you realize you probably should get up to eat something. 
I guess another pickle will do. And you grab the last one, eating it on your way out to walk your dog. Hopefully no one will see me, you say to yourself. I'm really not in the mood to talk to anyone. Sound familiar? Do you know anyone who's experiencing this now? I experienced overwhelm, exhaustion, loss, isolation, and many sleepless nights worrying about my parents. I understand what you're going through. The experience of being a caregiver can be complex, confusing, challenging, and it can also be rewarding when you're provided with resources, tools, and support. So that's, that's what my book is about. It's about reconnecting you with joy, joy for life. Joy is what's going to sustain you. It's going to fight off anxiety. It's going to bring peace and help you sleep at night. It's going to help balance your life. It's going to fill you up with energy. Cultivate and develop the joy. Joy is different from happiness. Happiness is fleeting, it fluctuates, and usually depends on outside circumstances. Joy, however, is something inside of us, we must cultivate it. We must tap into it if we're going to overcome the trials of life. You see, you may be in a trial, you may be in a difficulty. You may have lost a loved one and you feel sorrow. But you know what's on that other side of sorrow? It's joy. The fruit of joy causes you to be strong, causes you to stand firm, and it causes you to overcome. And that's why joy is so important. You're going to use joy to get you through those negative thoughts, to get you out of that defeat and discouragement. Joy is the key to overcome trials and hardships, but it's like anything else. You have to cultivate it. <laughs> Karesi would like to be off the couch now. <laughs> They always manage to bring joy in my life. <laughs> so for some people, this, they, they can be more joyous. And for others who may be melancholic, they have to work on this to feel more joy. So reality is in a trial, we all need this joy. So we need to develop it. When I was a caregiver for my mom, it was difficult. I felt the burnout. And at the same time, I kept asking myself, how do I brighten up her day? How can I help her feel better? How can I feel better? And I didn't know how to tap into it. So I asked God for help. Then I started coming up with ideas to try and make her smile, to bring joy into her life. And a voice said, brighten up. There's a light inside of you. Every day we have to practice joy. We have to laugh in the face of adversity. We have to smile when there's nothing to smile about. We need to find joy in the simple things. When I was caring for my mom, she was living with an autoimmune disease and she had so much physical pain she was discouraged and had many difficulties. It was so hard to see her suffer so much and I worried all the time whether or not I was doing the right thing or whether or not I was doing enough for her. And I made it my mission to make her smile or laugh every time I was with her. So I asked her one day, what would make you smile right now? 
And at first she couldn't answer it. And then I just kept asking. And I made a list of all the things that bring her joy. And I started scheduling joy time with my mom. And we had so much fun doing things that she loved doing. And then we did th things together that I loved doing. And the more things we did together that were fun, the more joy was cultivated. One of her favorite things to do was to ride in her wheelchair to a local ice cream stand and enjoy a gelato, hazelnut and lemon. This was one of the easiest ways to bring a smile on my mom's face. And I'm grateful that we had the most meaningful and fun times during those walks. We walked and walked and talked and went to the park and went anywhere and everywhere that she wanted to go. And it was very beautiful. In step six, so I, I shared eight steps to prevent caregiver burnout. And in step six in chapter nine, I just wanna read something to you from my book. And it's one of the things that um, we used to do, and I call them, is joyful meditations. Oh, so part of that is embrace nature. Nature is the perfect teacher. So be a part of nature. Observe nature. Go for long walks and do walking meditations, listening to positive affirmations playing in the background. Be in awe with the beauty of nature. I'm always in complete bliss when I watch a sunrise or a sunset or a rainbow, Judy. <laughs> <laughs> and I love going for walks with my dog, Lexi, and now Gracie, who always brings me joy and makes me laugh. The key is to realize that joy is an inner state. Joy lives within you, and joy is not dependent on your external circumstances. Joy loves to share its joy. Bring more joy into your life. Sense the beauty around you. Notice the details of plants, birds, trees, bugs. This week, I challenge you, get up early and take a few moments of solitude and silence to start your day. Joy arises in those moments of silence and you'll find the rest of your day is more peaceful. I start each morning with a morning ritual of silence and setting an intention for the day. I set an intention of who I wanna be and choose thoughts, behaviors and actions that align with who I wanna be bringing more joy into my life and into your life means you will feel more energy and vitality. Joy gives you direct access to your creativity. It helps you connect with others and with life itself. In fact, when you're in joy, you don't feel lonely or isolated. Being in the state of joy is a meaningful habit you must cultivate. Get started on creating a relationship with joy. So that was from page 77 on embracing nature. So today I have a gift for everyone. I would love, love, love to send you an ebook on ways to cultivate more joy in your life. Whoa. Something that I produced and created um, after I wrote my book. Of course, I mentioned elements of it, and then there was sort of more things were coming to me. So I just wrote and created an ebook. So to receive your copy, send an email to info at josephinegracecoaching.com. That's info at, and maybe we'll, we'll, what we'll do is we'll put it in the chat box. Info at, if Judy, if you can. Um, well, I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we'll put it on Paradigm Shifters page. Okay. We'll awesome. put it, I'll put it up. We're, it's going to be YouTube video and I'll put it up right under the video. Yes. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. Amen. Yeah. Thank you.
keep going. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I, I, I just wanted to share um, a gift for everyone because I really, I, I really do believe in the most challenging times. And we're experiencing a dark night of the soul collectively right now. Whether you are a caregiver, whether, whether you're not a caregiver for a loved one, you are caring for yourself during this, this, this trying time, this really dark night of the soul for everyone, collectively, globally. And for me, if it wasn't for joy and learning skills and learning ways to cultivate that joy, it, it would be isolating. And yet when you have tools and resources available to you and, and when you remember, wow, I've, I've gone through a few dark nights of my soul. And what was it that brought me through that? You know, the, what always comes to mind and it's biblical, it's this too shall pass. But when you're in it, it just feels just, right? It's just, it, you, you, there, there aren't enough words to describe it at times. I did my best to try to describe it, but at times it's, it's, um, it can be challenging. So not long ago, my friend Patty died. And I didn't even know she was sick. She had cancer. And what we shared in common, we were both caregivers for our parents. She died on her 44th birthday. I didn't even know she was suffering. She kept it all in. She experienced burnout to the extreme. And she didn't talk about her pain. When I heard the news about her death, that's when I realized there are many people out there who need to know how to better handle being a caregiver. And that's what started this journey of writing my book, The Joyful Caregiver, Eight Steps to Prevent Caregiver Burnout. There is a way to live gracefully and experience more joy in your life during difficult times. I'm not here to tell you it's easy or that you should be content that your loved one has a chronic illness. That's not joy. I'm here to share with you ways to reduce the stress and be compassionate, resilient, joyful, and empowered. When you practice these steps in my book, you, along with others around you, will see the transformation of light, love, compassion, and improved relationships. You will find the power within you to help you through the turbulent times. You will have tools and strategies to ensure you and your loved ones receive the help and care that you need. You will be guided to the best ways to handle your self-care and encouraged to make yourself a priority. Your health and life matters too. You can be joyful and prevent burnout. I'm on a mission to inspire others to live their best life during life's battles. I'm changing the lives of caregivers, one caregiving heart at a time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay. I'm grateful to be here and I honor you all for being part of this Transformation Tuesday. You made a decision to take time out for you to do something for yourself and learn ways to cultivate joy. Wow. Yay. Oh my God. Thank you so much. How powerful. I'm crying, right? You know, you know, I just, it was this morning I, in my meditation group, the word was joy we were meditating on. Um, and the events of the last week or two have had, had, I was like under, I felt really under and we were meditating on that word. And I'm like, well, I haven't, I haven't cultivated joy for a while. Mm. So I went out for a walk and it snowed here in Austin two days ago. And I wanted to see if there was still snow and there was snowballs where the kids were out, but the, the, 
the thing is, can you see that? I can. That's in the snow. That's where, um, that's in my backyard. Right before we got on, there's still a little bit of snow. And I wrote the word joy in the snow. Love it. And I had no idea that, well, I, I, I was going to ask you about that. I have the book. I've been reading it like crazy. And I was going to go, how the heck? Do I cultivate, you know, join then it says, how do I care for myself and be guilt free? And, you know, that's a whole nother man. We're going to have to have you back <laughs> for sure. So I, I'm going to, this is the book. And it just got released in December. And the way I knew it was released is I was watching your Facebook Live open up this box when it came. And I think when we met, you had that idea of writing the book, but I don't think you had started writing it. Right. I wrote it last summer. Um, so Patty died on December 15th in 2018. And that's when this whole journey of, oh my goodness. And, and at that moment, there was something that I realized I didn't finish grieving oh. my mom and dad's death. And it just stirred up so many emotions within me at that, at that time. And, and the conversations that I didn't have with Patty because I didn't know she was struggling, you know, and she, she died on her birthday and it was, it, it just completely moved me that, I thought, wow, what if I had those conversations and we, and I could have shared with her what I did when I went through, oh gosh, it was a year and a half of just loss and lo like loss after loss after loss. And I, and, 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 and found ways to overcome and break through. And I thought, what if I had that chance? And I didn't want to have any more what ifs with anyone else. And that's what stirred up, th there must be a need. And I was looking and I, I thought, wow, you know, and originally my book was called Help, My Loved One Has Cancer. And that's when um, it, it, it came out in uh, 2019. So I wrote the book, I hired a book coach, wrote the book in nine weeks. And from there, um, it was out on Kindle for some time, became best-selling, um, best-selling author on Kindle and shortly after um, my New York publisher picked up the book and that's when this whole sort of discussion this was back in December of last year January of this year the title was changed to the joyful caregiver literally right before this like March you know 2020 pandemic and that's when I was just it, it the timing is you know, it's, it is what it's it is. Divine timing, right? Well, yeah. I'm gonna, uh, this is so good. I am so grateful for you. And so we, we, what I would like to put a blessing on you mm. from our group, from uh, Paradigm Shifters to you and ask you, what would you love to have us hold for you for you on your journey as you uncover and discover and meet all kinds of people or whatever it is that holds for you. What would you love to have us hold as a group for you? I would love for all of you to envision courage and strength and vibrancy at all times while I'm speaking, while I'm coaching, while we all globally and collectively go through this dark night of the soul, that I remember and reconnect at all times with joy and love so that I stay connected 
And so that I can make the impact that I was meant to make here on, on earth. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Whoosh! Up to Canada. And so it is. Thank you. So we let it be. We're so grateful for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for, for this opportunity to be with the Paradigm Shifters, to be joyful and to share and to experience and see beautiful faces that I haven't seen in quite some time and to just be in this, in this space with all of you. It's an honor. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. And so it is. We'll be back next week for Transformational Tuesday again. Oh, man.